And here's a live, Facebook Live with Chris Sosolsky and the wife, Kristen. And we're going to be talking more about joy. So, like, uh, it's been like three days ago, I talked about the fruit of the spirit, uh, the fruit of the spirit of joy. And I want to kind of make another point about that. And this is going to be a little bit of a challenging one for some people because... And it's his because it is for me, and but it's an important part of really um, receiving God's joy and being a part of walking in the Spirit. Because being in the Spirit means that it's not always going to be what our flesh desires. Actually, it's mostly not what the flesh desires. And this one, this truth in particular, is going to really challenge your flesh. And your thinking and everything. I mean, not that you've heard it before, but but I think that it's gonna really it's something we really have to look t to God for, and that is that we need to be able to rejoice in our sufferings and our trials in our tests. Um, I know it's like it's impossible. How can you rejoice in in something that seems bad? You know, um, there's a scripture that says, "Oh, Paul." In Romans 12, or no, 2 Corinthians 12, 12, he said that it's the part, it's the scripture that talks about where um, that Paul had a thorn in his flesh that was, um, he asked um, that Satan was um, agonizing him over and he was suffering and he was having a hard time with it. And, and then he asked God, please remove this trial, this test. And then he finally got, the Lord said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And so then he says, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, and in insults, and in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So that's, he says he delights in it. He rejoices in it. He, he, he's so thankful for it. At the, in the time of, you know, sometimes it, maybe in the time of it can be challenging, but that's where he wants us to go, get to. And the reason why we need to get to that point is because then we're not fighting against it and we're not fighting against God because God wants us to go through stuff. Because right there it says if we don't fight it and we just receive God's direction in this, in the trials and in the, in the testing and the tough times, that's when we can just let go of our flesh and the, the flesh can die and we can be more consumed with the Holy Spirit, more consumed with God, and He becomes strong in us. So strong that we are so full of God that we, we get all the fruits of the Spirit overwhelming. And we have overwhelming joy because joy comes from being with God. It doesn't come from getting everything nice in, in our situation or that our flesh is all happy and hunky-dory. I mean, how many times you've heard preachers say, oh, just be happy. That's what God wants you to be happy. No, he doesn't. He wants you to be with him. I mean, if, if you get joy out of it or if you get some happiness out of it, that's a that's a uh, added plus. But that's not what we shoot for. We shoot for being with the Lord and walking in the Spirit. That's what the whole Bible is about, is walking with the Lord. It's not about being happy. It's not about getting blessings. It's not about, about you know, satisfying the flesh. <coughs> Don't listen to other people that say that because they're wrong. And it's going to lead you to death. Because the lust of the eyes and the and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the of of life leads to destruction. It leads you to sin. And and so that's opposite of what we're supposed to be doing in walking in the spirit as a Christian. I know it's hard. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. That's why we need to ask God to help us. Say, God, please help me to understand that, how, to, to, to really grasp what it means to really rejoice in this. And rejoice not in a way that, that you're going to be all happy about it, but you're rejoicing that, oh, I know that this is going to be good for me. There's another scripture that, um, let's see. <coughs> it's Romans. Oh, I just lost one of my pages, but... 
Romans 12, verse 12. It says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. And faithful in prayer. Because we need to, you know, it's just saying that that when we when we're constantly being with the Lord and we're constantly seeking the Lord, that's when we can have we can have hope and we can know that God's working things out. Last time I talked about how we have joy because we know God gives results and the results are based on knowing getting connected with Him and getting to heaven. See the results of being in the Holy Spirit and being with God is for is being overflow with true life. And true life is being being satisfied in your heart and your soul. What and your heart and soul and your mind and all that we're meant to be with God. It was we were meant to have that connection with the with the with with the Holy Spirit and, and the Father and Jesus. So much so that so that we're, when we're connected with Him, it's like oh, this is this is what it's all about. But see, we don't get there. We we operate so much in the flesh. That we think, well, God's not that special. I mean, I think of God all the time. I pray and I read my Bible. But if you're doing that in your flesh, it's going to feel empty. It's going to feel like, eh, I don't know. I, I pray a lot and I, I don't get much out of it. I read the Bible and it's just I don't get much out of it. Because if you're doing it in the flesh and you're not asking God, God, show me. And in dying to yourself, dying to your fleshly desires... You're, if you're not rejoicing in trials and saying, God, I just want you, I'm whatever it takes. I, sometimes I hate saying that. Kristen and me were saying that early on in our relationship. Whatever it takes, God. And I'm like, when I first was saying it, I'm like, it kind of freaks me out. I think, I don't know how I can do that, whatever it takes. But you know what? It does work that way. Because when he does things and tests you, and, he, and you start really you know, saying, God, that's what I want, all of a sudden th things start working out. And you start getting, you know, in a way that you start getting closer to God. You start trusting Him more. You start getting having more of the fruits of the Spirit, peace and joy and love. And you're just much more calm. You're, you know, restful. And, and you're not so anxious all the time. I mean, I used to be anxious all the time, even as a Christian. And it's just uh, fearful. And, and all the things that cause you to just have so much anxiety. And you think, oh, I just got to be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing. But if you're going to continue to be anxious if you're in your flesh, what you need is you need to give up your flesh and say, I'm not going to give into that. I'm going to allow myself to be weak. If, if trials come, thank the Lord, praise God, because that means I could just continue to let my, my flesh die. Can you talk a little bit about God sustaining you in your trials so that they don't feel like mm. they have to do all this work themselves to get through stuff? Right. Well, you go ahead, honey. What are you thinking? Like what? Just how we talk about God sustains us in our weakness. And yes. when we're suffering and going through these sufferings, oh, right. God's producing a greater weight. Like it says, these these present trials and sufferings don't compare to the glory that's about to be revealed. Yes. And so God is perfecting a vessel that's fitted for the master's use. Right. And when we surrender over during these trials, suffering, hard times, attacks, persecutions, we surrender over. We don't try to fix it or run away right. from it, but we allow ourselves yes. to go through it. Yeah. Christ is right there. He draws near to the brokenhearted. Yes. And so he and he pours out, he empowers you on high. It yeah. talks about we're empowered with dunamis power, like yes. um, this heavenly supernatural power yes to go through these things yes. we don't have to feel like we're just gonna get beat into the ground but we could actually feel strengthened because yeah. we surrendered over our ideas mm -hmm. and us running away from it rather yeah. we just allowed ourselves to for it to come on us right for christ's right. sake and then he comes and he empowers us mm. to go through it yeah. and he stands right next to us he goes before us he stands behind <sighs> us He's our rear guard, and yes. he's our front man. <laughs> yes. And he, the battle belongs to the Lord, mm. so we don't have to, you know, be fighting this thing. 
Right. He just had to stand there and yes. have to do what he wants to do. Right, us. right. You know, and it's not that it's not challenging. It's like, but that's the right. goal because she's right. When you're in the in in when in, in the Lord, oh my gosh, you feel so protected. I mean, there's so many times in Scripture that God was with the those that that um that were fighting for Him. Even David, when he was running from Saul, God was with him. He was rejoicing. It wasn't that he wasn't wasn't you know had to flee from Saul. He still was fleeing, but he knew he had the presence of the Lord. And Psalms is full of times where he says, "Oh, why are you downcast, oh my soul? Why are you downcast?" Yeah. Oh, didn't didn't say he didn't have feelings, but he knew that the key was getting back into the Lord, back into the Spirit, walking the Lord, and remembering how great God is, and asking Him, "God, help me, help me, you know, help my help me to get back to you. You're my, you're my refuge. You're my." Your um my strong tower. And he wanted he try he was trying to re, you know help help himself get faith enough to get into that in that place where he needed to be with the Lord so that he can trust him and all of a sudden come back to that feeling of oh yeah, God is the answer. God is the answer for everything. And I just have to trust in that. And that's what builds trust. See, trust isn't built because you think that he keeps doing things for you. And like, oh, I remember all, you remember all the good things he did, all the things he did for you. You know, that's never going to be enough. Because how many times have God done things for you and you're still not trusting? You know where trust comes from? Trust doesn't come from God. And you're going to say, God, help me just to, to trust you and help me to get through this with you. And when we do and we go through these trials and we're like, hang on to the Lord and say, Ask him for help, and you and you ask him for revelation, and say, God, help me to see what you see, because God will open your eyes. I mean, He opened the eyes of a servant one time and saw all the angels protecting them of this army against two people, him, Elisha, and his servant, and all these angels were protecting them. And that that's what He does for us; is He constantly is protecting us and directing us, but we don't always see it. We just see the troubles. We don't see his protection in it, and we don't see his guidance in it. And if we're if we're not looking for it, if we're not asking for it, say, God, show me how you're protecting me. And all of a sudden, he'll show you, like, oh, you are so good, God. Oh, that's right. Oh, look at how you've protected me. Sometimes you you are so caught up in the what's not happening, like, oh, look at this isn't working out. That's not working out. That we get depressed because we think that we th should have it more easy. We should. We want it like easy for our flesh, so we can stay in our flesh. Well, God doesn't want that. God doesn't want us to be in the flesh. He wants to be connected with us and and being this walking with Him, walking in the Holy Spirit. That's what He desires most of all. So then, when we are, then we're like, oh, this is where we're supposed to be. Yes, there it is, being with the Holy Spirit, and then you get His presence, and it's like it's like when you're getting your favorite, you know, um, ice cream. Mm or your favorite anything or when you're you know it's like meeting the president of the united states or somebody that you really admire you know some sports figure or whatever or you know uh, or actor or something you're like, oh my gosh that person and you're so awed by them that's what you can be with the holy spirit and god every moment you're with him because once he you get in touch with him it's not just the idea of it it's like really experiencing him and say god i really just want you I really want to just connect with you and your love and all that you have for me. Once you allow yourself to to believe that that's gonna that's more important than anything, and they, that 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 it can just saturate with you, and it's so powerful. And it, and he just ask him for God. Show me how what that means. How much you love me and care about me. Show me, show me, show me all the things that that you want to that that you want me to experience about you. And when you start experiencing those things, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it in the whole world. Because you can't get that kind of love, that kind of peace, that kind of joy, all the fruits of the Spirit, other than from God. And that's what that's what it's all about. There's one more scripture I want to bring up. And that is in uh, Romans 5, verse 3. Um, I'm going to start in uh, the beginning of um, in, in verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, so we've been justified through faith. So we are now Christ's followers, okay? Because we've accepted Jesus and we've accepted his faith that he has given us. And we have peace with God now. Oh, peace with God. God the Father, God who created everything. We have peace with him now. I mean, that, that alone should just blow you away for you really believe in. Because that is amazing that, that he picked you. 
and you get to pick him, the the creator of everything. And he's like, he he's like, oh, I want you, I want you. It's like being picked by the president of the United States or picked by, like, um, who's a famous uh, actor that I can think of, like Bruce Willis for a play or I mean for a for the movie. You know, I want him to be in my movie. You'd be like, oh my gosh. Hanks? You know, Tom Hanks, that's the one I was thinking of. Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, I want you to be in my movie. You know, Tom Hanks comes to your house, knocks on your door. Excuse me. Um, I heard you're here. You'd be freaking out. You would freak out. I would freak mm-hmm. out. I'd freak out. I like Harrison Ford. So, Harrison Ford, I mean, I just thinking about him freaks me out. Harrison Ford, I love him. Oh, he's such a good actor. Anyway, okay. But God is best. God is the best. And I'm starting to realize that more and more as he, I ask him for help with that. Anyways, and he says, So through whom we have have gained access by faith. So we've gained access to Jesus Christ. We've gained access to him. Into his grace. So we're not just, you know, getting to have a relationship. But he's forgiving us and he's saying, I know you screw up, but that's not what I, I desire. I just want to be with you. I want to be with you and all your screw ups. Because he can change our screw-ups. He can use those things, our weaknesses, for the good. He says that. And so we just have to die to it. We have to say, God, I can't change this, but you can. And be willing to change it. Be willing to say, God, whatever it takes. God, if you want me to stop doing something, if you want me to start thinking differently, then I'm going to start thinking differently. But you got to help me to do it, Lord yes. God. And it says, in which we now stand. And we, so we stand in that. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. See, there it is again. We rejoice because God's going to give us results. There it is again. He's going to give you the result of heaven for eternity. I, 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 when I'm really in the Lord and you're just like, oh, this is good. It gets even better when you start thinking and you're walking in the spirit and then you start thinking of heaven. Because when you think of flesh, you think, yeah. God, you know, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. But it doesn't touch you as much as when you're walking in the spirit. Because you're just like, oh my gosh, that's forever. Forever. Nothing's going to bother us. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be joyous. It's going to be, oh, with the Holy Spirit and God all the time. Oh, I can't even fathom that. It just blows my mind. And so that's where... It's a, that's what we that, that's the hope we ask that we can live in with when we're walking in the spirit and that's what it's all about um and so we hope in that and not only that but we also rejoice in our sufferings what so we can rejoice in our sufferings it's just as much as heaven this is why here it comes because we know that suffering produces perseverance. There it comes. See, these are the results now you're getting. So when you rejoice in your sufferings and your trials and you ask God for help and say, I'm going to stick this out, God. I'm not going to run away from it. I'm not going to escape from it. I'm not going to be afraid of it. I'm not going to freak out by it. I'm just going to trust you. Then that's going to create perseverance. And perseverance brings character. And you're going to have confidence. And you're going to be trusting in the Lord. You're going to have more strength. And you're going to just going to be more filled with him and you're going to be able to withstand so much that's where he says that's why he says uh i can do all things through christ who strengthens me because he's the one that strengthens you because you're not moved by all these bad things that are happening anymore and character brings hope and then you have hope because your hope isn't based on the fact that things are going to happen hunky for your flesh and all these good things no you're going to hope because you know that god is going to going to be with you and all this stuff and he's going to carry you through like Kristen said he's going to be able to he's going to provide you in every circumstance so whatever you have to go through he's going to be there he's going to give what you need he's going to give you all the strength he's going to give you all the fruits of the spirit joy love peace he's going to give you all that and you're going to be so satisfied in all circumstances that's what Paul said. So that's what we have to shoot for. And it's possible. Not just Paul is going to have to do, be able to do that anymore. God's saying, I'm going to want you to get, he's going to pour out his spirit, not so that we can leave in our flesh, know that we can live in the spirit, walk in the spirit, and no matter what happens, we're going to be joyous. Because that's what he's saying that's going to happen. So we just have to start walking in it and say, God, that's what I want. 
we got to start dying to our flesh now. That's enough of this, you know, like, oh, well, I can be partly my flesh now. And is it really about just being, you know, can be, can you just be happy a little bit and, and, you know, do what I want for, you know, half the time? No, that's not the goal. I mean, that's, I'm not there. I still do things I, I want to do and I say, oh, that's kind of too hard. And, but I'm like, no, God, help me to change this idea I have, these lies that I have, that I can't do just with you. And he's doing it more and more. And I'm getting more filled with him and more fruits. Um, that's where the fruits come from. And then where's what it says, and hope does not disappoint us. <laughs> See, that doesn't disappoint. Everything else is disappoints. Flesh, everything else disappoints. But not hope, <laughs> not God's, yeah. not God's direction. He's not going to disappoint us when things are going bad and things fall apart. He's right there. He's got everything planned. He's got every um, all that you need, and it's going to be like, oh, I'm still happy. I'm still joyous, mm. even though everything's falling apart. Wow, that's where we want to be. That's where I want to be, uh, because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's it. He's pour out his love. Lord, help us to just cry out to you, Lord God, to get this more and more, these, this truth that we, we aren't joyous and we aren't happy because of what situations or our flesh wants. It's because we cry out to you to ask, ask you for help in all circumstances so we can joy us no matter what happens. God, help us, help whoever's listening to, to strive for this, to, to seek out this, Lord God, because he's going to give it to us. He is, you are going to give us all that we need in this area, Lord God, all this revelation. If we just start asking for it and, and cry out for it and strive for it and, and knock and, and seek and find, because he is going to give us all the fruits, Lord God, and joy besides in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's where our strength comes from, Lord. And we just thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Huh? A little challenging, but now, does it make sense? <laughs> Love you. Yeah. Talk to you later.